Hey everybody and welcome to This Week at the Theater. This is the Snapshot of Sacramento for January 17th, 2023. We're moving right through January. It's kind of amazing how fast this time is going. And oh boy, do I have a lot to share with you tonight because we've had some changes. We've had some really crazy stuff. If any of you are following us anywhere else in the country, uh, California has gotten a little water lately. So we've had power outages and trees down and all kinds of insanity um, ensuing out here because of the weather. You know, it's not nice to mess with Mother Nature. And we as humans get humbled by it very frequently. So that's just how it goes. This show is always brought to you by the Sacramento Area Regional Theater Alliance. We are SARTA. Um, you know, just a little information about SARTA too. SARTA has been around for like 38 years in this general uh, area in Sacramento, uh, supporting our local theaters. One of the major things that uh, mm -hmm. used to happen was a... Um, event called the Ellie Awards. And so there were some theater awards that went on during that time also. Uh, COVID pretty much put the kibosh on all of those kinds of things. And, you know, who knows, maybe one day down the road that may reappear. But for right now, we're trying to move into some new areas to find ways that we can support our community theaters as they're coming out of this event called a pandemic. Huh. We've all dealt with that. And look at new and interesting ways to really present theater. We have had a lot of our theaters, I hate to use this word, but they use it so much, pivot, if you will, to try and figure out what they can do to remain a viable theater company during a pandemic. So a lot of people have gone over to or had gone over to doing virtual shows and, you know, having virtual audiences. And you know what? A lot of our theaters have kept that model. So there are situations where you can buy theater tickets and you can either go and be in the theater that evening or if you would rather be at home, you can stay home and watch it on a video feed from your home. So there are several theaters who are doing that. I'll try and call them out when I see them roll through in our um, repertoire of theaters here, uh, because it's interesting to, to see that happen. I went to a performance over the holidays of one show that was being simultaneously live fed to an audience who are watching virtually as we were sitting in the theater watching the show. So kind of cool. Um, we've learned a lot during our wonderful pandemic days here, um, and we're really making it work for us now. So, as you notice, I don't have any special events this time. Um, we have this wind down. People are kind of exhausted from the rush of the holidays, so no special events at this time. But we do have a fair few auditions. So, as I always like to tell you, get those headshots and resumes ready. Ooh! Before we get to the auditions, I have some thank yous. Speaking of headshots, that reminded me, we had an event here in town where we hosted a Broadway karaoke night. Yeah, you heard me right. We did show tune karaoke. It was so much fun. And we also, during this event, collected for two of our local charities. One was the Front Street Animal Shelter, and for them, we collected um, blankets and large towels that we could put down for our uh, pets in the um, kennels where they are. Those kennels are always all made of concrete. And quite frankly, they're pretty dang cold. So the shelter is always asking for large towels, blankets that they can use. They don't need comforters or anything like that. So don't get a wild hair and start taking those down there. But blankets that can be rewashed big towels, smaller towels, bath sized towels, you know, that they can put down that the animals can cuddle up into or that they can use inside of some of their kennels and cages and carriers. Um, they need those a lot. They go through quite a few of them. So we took up a collection for that. And I'm ha happy to say I have a huge box of the blanket and towel donations. And I had some more 
else contact me today and say, we were there, we had a great time, but you know what? I didn't bring a donation. Can I still give you something? You know what? Thank you so much to all those folks who came out and donated. The other uh, local community support system that we collected for was one called Loaves and Fishes. Uh, they've been about for decades now here in our Sacramento area, supporting and helping our unhomed community. And during this winter, and as, as I said earlier, we've had some crazy winter weather. We have to remember that people are cold out there. So we collected gloves, hats, people brought us jackets. I, I felt overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and care that people provided. Uh, and those are going to go down to the shelter at Loaves and Fishes so that people can have those and stay warm out there um, in, these, in their situation. You can't take and solve a problem immediately, but you can be of help in some way. So this was us, another community organization, trying to support two of our other community organizations. Uh, we also took up some collections for our general fund and our scholarship fund. We got very generous folks donating to that. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who came down to our Broadway karaoke night last Saturday night and donated all those things and had lots of fun singing with us. We're going to do it again. We'll do it again in March. And so we'll have a new place that we'll announce to you that we're going to go and have our karaoke night in March. So stay tuned for more information on that. But looking at the headshots made me think of that because our, our amazing headshot photographer came down and he was there too for the first two hours doing headshots for folks. So there are about four or five people who came down and got some headshots done that night. Um, for a donation. So, I mean, it's, we're always trying to make it work and make it affordable for our local actors to have all the things that they need to be ready to go into these auditions. So let's get to these auditions, okay? First one I need to tell you about is one that has been rescheduled. Um, and as they said in their email to us, when they sent this information, you can't fight mother nature. So while they were supposed to have it this past weekend, was kind of scary this past weekend. Their new dates will be January 21st at two o'clock and January 23rd at two o'clock to audition for the production of Prisoner of Second Avenue at Volcano Theater Company. These folks are located well up in the foothills area in our region and they really got some serious weather happening up there. I mean, we did two down here, but it gets more intense the higher up you go in elevation and they're kind of up in elevation so the intensity of what was going on was a lot more for them um so their their um experience was yeah intense so they had to reschedule it's just you know you can't you just can't um so new dates you still have an opportunity look at this you didn't miss it so that's great all right so prisoner of second avenue this is a wonderful show too. Neil Simon always writes these fun and funny pieces. So go and uh, audition for that. And Volcano is just beautiful up there. It's a gorgeous area. Now we have another emergency situation. The McLaughlin Theater Company has an emergency casting call out. Um, when you don't get enough people the first time to audition for something, sometimes you have to go dip back in there again and ask for people who could come and do these roles. So they've got some open roles. They're looking for uh, a Capulet, Gregory, Peter, the Clown, Chorus, Ensemble Actors, this is a classic, y'all. Come on. It's Romeo and Juliet. You know you want to be a part of this. Get in touch with the McLaughlin Theater Company. And um, they're going to be rehearsing on Tuesdays and Thursdays coming up. They would like you to prepare a monologue from any Shakespeare play. 
Uh, you don't have to memorize it. They said memorization is not required. They're located up on Switzer Road in Loomis, California. Again, it's the McLaughlin Theater Company. It's an emergency. They need some people to fill these roles for Romeo and Juliet. So if this is something you've always wanted to do, get in touch with them, please. We've got some more January auditions coming up. These are going to be at the Chautauqua Playhouse for a show called Intimate Apparel. And I want to share with you this information on it because I read the synopsis about the show and um, I'm going to go because it sounds absolutely fascinating and kind of beautiful. Um, the auditions for this are being held on January 24th and the 25th at seven o'clock in the evening over at Chautauqua Playhouse. And this is a play by Lynn Notage. It's called Intimate Apparel. And it's going to be directed by Sarah Townsend. The performances are going to be coming up in April, April 14th through May 14th of this year. So listen to this, it sounds amazing. Setting, time and place. In 1905, New York, an independent woman named Esther creates beautiful lingerie for clients that range from white society mavens on the Upper East Side to prostitutes in the Tenderloin District. As she works toward her dream of opening a beauty salon for black women, she earns the trust, respect, and friendship of her diverse customers. And when she enters into a romantic correspondence with a mysterious pen pal, her quest for empowerment and self-actualization takes unexpected turns. A landmark play from MacArthur Genius Grant recipient and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Two Pulitzer Prizes. Lynn Notage. So they need a diverse cast. Uh, auditions are going to be cold readings from the script, so you don't have to memorize anything. But the characters are Esther, Mrs. Dickinson, Mrs. Van Buren, Mr. Marx, Mamie, and George. So not a really big cast, but it sounds like it's going to be an amazing show. So if you'd like to audition for this one, Intimate Apparel at the Chautauqua Playhouse. The auditions are the 24th and 25th, so they're coming up at 7 o'clock. Get in touch with them to talk about that show. Add that one to the bottom of the stack and keep going. What else do we have? Ooh. Auditions for Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. If you've never seen this, you really need to go and see it. I had the pleasure last year of going to see a production of this over at the Sacramento Theater Company. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. These auditions for this story are going to be this coming Sunday, January 22nd uh, at 7 o'clock over at the Sutter Street Theater Annex on Figueroa Street. And rehearsals are going to be ongoing for a while. So the performances don't start until March. Murder on the Orient Express. If you've ever read Agatha Christie or enjoyed any of these stories, you would love this show. It has its moments of funny. It has its moments of poignancy. And, you know, even if you've read it before, you know how it ends. It's still good to see it again. I mean, I knew how it ended, but it was great to see someone else put on the show. Every production company does a different interpretation of something and it is so wonderful to see the actors and the directors um, show you their version of it. So they want you to bring a resume and a headshot if you have them. I keep telling you you need to get those right and they're going to be cold readings from the script again for Murder on the Orient Express. Another production the Nutcracker, Last Hope. They're asking people to please uh, contact them for appointments to audition. So this is going to be a dance theater production and they're scheduled by appointment. You're going to contact them via phone or, or contact the VIP ballroom studio on Marconi Avenue here. You don't need to bring anything in particular and the auditions will be cold readings from the script again. So they want to have you there. So VIP Ballroom Studio, contact them to make your appointment to get in to, for a chance to be in, rather, the Nutcracker Last Hope. 
Auditions are also coming up this weekend on the 21st and 22nd for Green Room Confidential, The Unvarnished Tales of Women on Stage. This is going to be at Theater One and the Unitarian Universalist Society of Sacramento's um, space over on Sierra Boulevard, over in um, mid, uh, not Midtown, is heading toward uh, North Sacramento. Uh, it's produced by the Univer Unitarian Universalist Society, and they have a wonderful theater inside that church over there. I've been to and participated with several productions over there. This one's going to be directed by Sharice Addison and Lisa Irwin. So if you want to up uh, audition, for Green Room Confidential. Make sure you get your appointments. Uh, well, actually, you don't need an appointment. Just show up for the auditions on January 21st at 2 or January 22nd at 2 at the Universal Unitarian Universalist Society of Sacramento. That one's a mouthful. Empire Arts is having its audition uh, and they're saying, I kind of highlighted it so I'd remember to tell you, you need to be 18 or older to audition. So this is some adult content, folk. Um, all auditions are and rehearsals will be at Empire Launchpad, and that's at 24th Street, Room 13 in Sacramento. Auditions are on Saturday, January 21st from 11 to 1, and then again on Sunday the 22nd from 2 to 4. Uh, if you're auditioning, you only need to come to one of those dates. You don't need to come both times just to one of those dates. Um, but you need to stay for the entire audition. So plan two hours to be there so you can do the full audition. They're asking if you please bring a resume and a headshot or some sort of photo of yourself and come dress to move. Okay, so you're going to have to do some movement and uh, things. So don't wear anything too constricting. Go and audition for A Familiar Feeling. This is a device play about families, ghosts, and cycles of triumph and trauma that reverberate through generations. Wow, sounds powerful. So auditions again, January 21st, 11 to 1, January 22nd, 2 to 4 p.m. Empire Arts Collective. There's more auditions. I told you we had a lot of them today. This set of auditions is for Placer Repertory Theater. If you can picture yourself in one of these little boxes, maybe this is for you too. Um, let's see, do I have something else from them to share? Oh, yep, there it is. I had a lot of notes this time. I went ahead and printed it out because it was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? So they actually wanted to share some more along with the auditions for the company. And they're having a longer audition cycle. They start on the 21st and go through the 24th. They also say actors, educators, and friends of actors, especially um, actor creators, Placer Repertory Theater is offering an opportunity to actors age is 18 and up uh, to apply for the 2023 company membership. For early career and seasoned actors, this is an opportunity uh, to join a young, quickly growing professional theater company that is building a regional legacy. And they have put on some amazing performances uh, there. I've seen a couple of their plays now. So Placer Rep plays... Um, pays talent for rehearsals and performances and provides professional growth training. All ethnicities, genders, identities, and differently abled are welcome. So inclusive theater, we want to see more inclusive theater like that. It's great that they're doing this. So they're asking if you will come and play with them uh, or just share this opportunity with someone. Um, because they're looking for more actors in that area. So that's Placer Repertory Theater, January 21st through the 24th. Um, they've got a lot of things that they put on too, which are pretty darn amazing shows. And they do a fair few original works, so you can get in on some new cutting-edge material if you're working with them. Sierra College at the end of this month on January 30th and 31st will be holding their auditions for The Crucible, which is a play by Arthur Miller, does great dramas. This is going to be directed by Scott 
Adams, and they're welcoming both community actors and uh, folks who are enrolled at the college, might be students there, to come and apply uh, for the uh, show, audition for the show. And they're going to be on Monday and Tuesday, January 30th and 31st at 3.30 in the Dietrich Theater on the Rockland Campus, Sierra College, out on Sierra College Boulevard. The callbacks will be by invitation on Wednesday, February 1st. So you'll hear pretty soon if you've gotten a position in the Crucible. Just want to share a few things with you because we've been talking about this again and again. Um, theater is opening back up. We're coming off the end of a pandemic. And sometimes people think, well, it's just over and you throw all caution to the wind. But as you know, especially during this winter season, we have watched the incidences of flu go on the rise and COVID come back and go on the rise. We have a, seems like every third week I hear about a new variant. And one more um, item that's been out there, it's affected a lot of children, but it affects adults also, is uh, R RVS, RS RSV. It's another virus. Yet another virus. Seems like there's always something out there trying to get us. So our theaters have been posting what their guidelines are for coming out and enjoying theater with them. Please make sure you're checking before you go to the theater to find out what their guidelines are. Do you need to have a mask? Will they be providing masks? Are they checking for vaccines? Do you have your vaccine cards with you? Or if you are here in California and you've gotten your vaccines in California, the California database has your information updated. I just re-downloaded my information because I got my a uh, third booster back in December. So I put my newest iteration of my card into my phone and you can download it and just save it in your phone. So you have it when you go to these places. So you can show them, yes, I've been vaccinated. And you know, don't get out of the habit of at least carrying a mask with you. Cause should you have to put it on, you, you have it for yourself to put it on. So before you go to any of these, please check the theater's listing or their website to see what their rules are, what their protocols are that they're following for, for being able to come to something. I know I'm going to an event this weekend where they actually said they want a, you know, COVID test that you've taken within the last 48 hours that, you know, shows that you're negative. They're not kidding around. People we can get a little more comfortable, but we can't get complacent. So just the cautions, cautions for this. Um, uh, many of our theaters have had challenges because, you know, what happens if, if someone in the audience gets one of the actors sick? And the actors typically are performing without masks. So they they may be asking their audience members to wear a mask. So just, you know, Bring your love and understanding as they work to provide you the entertainment and educational opportunities. Let's continue to be kind and compassionate with each other, okay? Okay. And now that we've discussed our theater etiquette, let's check out what's playing right now at our local theaters. We've got a fair few things open also. Um, Chautauqua Playhouse is offering its um, production of Vanities, which is by Jack Hefner. Uh, it's one of their comedies that they're running at the Playhouse right now, and it's going to be showing through February 5th. So you still have plenty of time to get your tickets and go and see this. Performances are Fridays and Saturdays at 8, and then Sundays at 2 o'clock. So you can get a matinee in for this. So if you need tickets, you can go to the Chautauqua Playhouse website um, and or call their box office during business hours to get tickets for that. Okay, vanities. Cabaret. Now, this is a classic, you guys. You know, you want to see Cabaret. Davis Musical Theater Company. You may hear me refer to them as DMTC every now and again. Davis Musical Theater Company's main stage production is Cabaret. This is a fun, poignant, political, body, and heart touching uh, performance. If you've ever 
seen cabaret or even if you've never seen cabaret you need to go and treat yourself to a production of this show uh, it goes a lot of places that I think people don't really remember sometimes. They remember all the glitzy music, but they don't really think about the heavy story that goes with this particular show. It is playing through January 29th at the Gene Henderson Performing Arts Center over on Penna Drive in Davis. So please take some time, get your tickets, treat yourself to cabaret. You're going to love this one. We're getting ready to wrap up the production of Treasure Island, a musical adventure. It's closing this weekend, so this is your last opportunity to get tickets to go and see this. This would be a wonderful production. It's the Prince Street Players Limited production playing at the Woodland Opera House. It's the historic Woodland Opera House can't think of a better place to put this one on it should be great fun so remember this is the last weekend because it closes on the 22nd this is an adaptation from the novel by Robert Louis Stevenson uh, so go see Long John Silver and all the gang in Treasure Island a musical adventure get your R on this is also playing, although we've got a little bit longer to go with this one. Uh, this one is playing through the 28th of January. It's called Constellations, Quantum Multiverse Theory, Love and Honey. And it's a show by Nick Payne that's being directed by our own local Sacramento amazing director, actor, um, playwright i do believe can be added to their name also maggie upton this is presented by the artist collective and it's showing on thursdays and fridays at 8 and saturdays at 2 and 8 p.m the artist collective is presenting their shows downtown in midtown area on 28th at the uli theater so you can Google the Uli Theater and look it up. You can Google the Artist Collective and take a look so you can get your tickets. I plan on going to see this. It should be an amazing show. I know a few people who are in it, so I do, I do dearly want to see this show. So I might be treating myself to some theater this weekend. We'll see. Anyway, the Artist Collective, Constellations. Get your tickets. Go and treat yourself to some theater. Also coming later on in January, well, actually, it's starting uh, already. This is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And yes, if that sounds funny to you, it's a wonderful show. This is based on a children's book by the same title, and it's being put on by the Roseville Theater Arts Academy. Uh, it's playing through the 22nd, so it started last weekend and will play through this weekend. Usually the children's theater productions are a little bit shorter. Um, they don't make the children do as many runs of these different things. Uh, this is a Treehouse Players production of Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. If you have a chance to, you should read that book. It's pretty sweet. Well, that was a lot of what's playing right now, but we've got a fair few things coming soon too. And I know I use that term a lot, a fair few. Um, they're not an unfair few. Yeah, a fair few. I like that term. Uh, coming soon, coming soon. What's coming up at our local theaters that um, we want to definitely get in there and see? So here we go. This one's put, being put on by Capital Stage, and it's a production of The Chinese Lady. Now, this is an interesting story because it's about the first Chinese woman that ever comes to America. And, and she's sort of treated sort of like a celebrity and also sort of like an oddity um, because she is taken around the country and, you know, people are, are looking at her as this exotic unusual thing so this is uh sort of the story being told by through the eyes of this young chinese girl and it was from 1834 she was 14 and uh came over here to america and was put on display yeah for for the public who 
just thought she was just this unusual thing. And this was also the period in that culture's time when they used to bind the ladies' feet and they would wrap them from the time they were very young girls to so that they would fit into these little tiny shoes. You know, all cultures have their different concepts of what beauty is. And this is just one of them, you know, people aren't typically doing that anymore, but this was something that was done then. So, you know, um, this sort of walks you through uh, her travels through America, basically as a living exhibit for all the time that she was around here. And she talks about um, what her, her vision of the anti-Asian uh, ideas in America look like. So um, it's not just a light story. It's going to be a heavy story, too. Uh, and I think that it should be great. It won the Horton Foot Prize in 2020. Um, this is one of the ones, and I wanted to tell you that, that is live theater and virtually on demand. So this one opens on January 25th, next week, and will be playing through February 26th. So if you get tickets for this, you can choose the option of watching it virtually from your home or going to the theater to see the Chinese lady. Chautauqua Playhouse's Children's Theater will be bringing their presentation of Cinderella. It's going to play through January 28th. Uh, so you can get your tickets now for this wonderful production. Uh, they're eight to ten dollars for just general seating so that's a pretty good price you guys for theater tickets contact the chautauqua playhouse or call the box office during business hours and because of the popularity of ch the children's season advanced purchase of your tickets is advised because these go pretty quickly uh, people are looking at things for the children to do and you know families buy these up your children are in a play come on they're all there with the cameras so they can see their little ones in these productions so this is a wonderful show. Again, it's it's running right now and through January 28th. This one just started. Another one that's coming up starts this weekend. It's going to open on the 20th. Is Escanaba in the Moonlight. This is written by the wonderful actor Jeff Daniels and directed by our own Connie Mockenhaupt. This is going to be playing at Sutter Street Theatres. So you can get your tickets at the Sutter Street Theater website for Escanaba in the Moonlight. More for Sutter Street Theater. Um, they've got, and yes, they only have one stage, but they have a lot of things going on up there because they have their um, adult stage and they have their children's stage productions. This one's one of their children's stage productions uh, that is opening on January 28th and playing through February 26th on Saturdays and Sundays at 1. They're doing a production of Alice in Wonderland. Come on, we all know this story, but it's so much fun to see it acted out in front of you. So go see this amazing production directed by Mike Jimena uh, and Rated G. You can bring everybody to see Alice in Wonderland. This one should be an amazing one. This particular production is going to be the sort of the start of Black History Month celebrations for Celebration Arts. And um, they're doing it in conjunction with St. Hope and the Guild Theater. So this is going to be kind of an intense show um, direct from Death Row, The Scottsboro Boys by Mark Stein. And it's in celebration again of Black History Month. Celebration Arts has partnered with St. Hope and the Guild Theater to bring the story of the Scottsboro Boys told through narrative and vaudeville in a biting satire. Sacramento's own uh, amazing director and Pulitzer Prize winner nominated composer Harley White, uh, Anthony Duan are um, leading this production of it's directed by Anthony Duan and the opening performance is going to be February 10th at the Guild Theater at 8 o'clock. I would suggest you get your tickets early for this. Um, 
If you want to look up the historic story behind this, you absolutely can. Um, this is a court case that looked at several different elements of some of the not so beautiful parts of American culture, including the exploitation of racism by the two women who falsely accused these young black men um, of uh, and the Communist Party's exploitation of racism in its efforts to recruit African Americans. So when false claims are made against someone, and let's face it, you know, if it's a, a man of color, it's even worse um, for them. So this is just, again, talking about some of our not so pleasant parts, but, you know, we have to remember our history so we don't do it again. So direct from death row, the Scottsboro Boys, and they shared with us who their cast is. So you have a moment to meet the cast of this particular production. Um, the Scottsboro Players are Brooklyn T. Solomon as Ozzy, Maurice Nakane as Clarence, Serena Castro as Leroy, Taylor Vaughn as Eugene, Tyree Allen as Haywood, Howie Bryant plays Andy, Conrad Crump is Charlie. Naima Moon is Olin. And Maurice Cephas III is Willie. And Joey Archer Jr. will be Piano Man. So they asked us to stay tuned for more information about the Scottsboro Players. You really don't want to miss this production. It should be amazing. This is put on by Celebration Arts, which is Sacramento's premier black theater company. Um, Go see this production, direct from Death Row, The Scottsboro Boys by Mark Stein. Coming in February to the Roseville Theater Arts Academy will be its production of Dragon the Line. This is another one of their Youth and Little Ones productions. So they've got a couple of different um casts that will be uh, doing this production. So depending on which day you go, you may see a different cast of young people doing this production at Roseville Theater Arts Academy. It's written by Kathy Keller and Jennifer Vaughn. So it's an original work. Uh, February 16th through February 24th, Dragon the Line. Well, we've come to that part where I always give you the big spiel about how you, if you have a theater company, if you have an audition that you want to share, if you have a show you want to tell us about, you can go to our website where it says shows and auditions and fill out the form that's there and it will go directly onto our calendar and it'll get uploaded to all of our social media, which is Facebook and Instagram. Um... We can't say more about how that we're trying to really make this super easy and very user friendly for all of our our patron theaters out there. Um, we want you to be able to access all of these things. And when you go to the page that has shows and auditions, I can't flip it around here because that's not possible with this technology. But what happens is you'll see the whole calendar that's been populated with everybody's shows. So you could go there and go, hmm, what do I want to see this weekend? Well, there's a great show. This looks like a good show. I'll get tickets for this for Friday and I'll get tickets for a matinee for this on Sunday. And you can plan your whole weekend by taking a look there. So you can let people who want to go to the theater and see some of these amazing community theater productions know what your production company is doing simply by going and filling out the form. You can even upload your posters. If you've got posters and pictures, there's a place for you to drop those in too. They'll be seen here because we pull them down and we share them, like I said, in all of our social media spaces. So they'll go into the newsletter directly. You don't have to email it to us. You can just go to the website and put that information in. We're really going to make a big push this year to get everybody used to just going to the website and uploading that information. Um, we've tried to make it, again, as user-friendly as we possibly can 
for you to be able to get your information out there about your shows, get your information out there about your auditions that you're having, get your information out there about any of your special events that are coming up. If you're having a, a gala or something like that, or a fundraiser, we want to be able to tell people about it for you, okay? Uh, you'll also find all the information about us on that website too. Um, what we're doing, what kind of upcoming things we've got going on, what kind of programs are happening, when our next karaoke event is going to be. We're also looking at planning some um, readers theater events. We want to have some what we call open mic theater nights where we get together and just, you know, read some plays, cold read it. Um, it, it so it could be a bunch of original works because Quite frankly, original works are a little bit easier to work with because you don't have to pay the rights for those. So if you've got something you've been sort of uh, working on and you would like to test it out with an audience, let's sort of know. We'll get some people together and we'll sit with you and we'll go through your, you know, listen to your play. Uh, we're not, you know expert playwrights. We're not going to critique it, but you can hear what it sounds like out there. We're also going to look at getting some of the classics and maybe get, getting a chance to do some of those too. So if you ever wanted to be in Shakespeare's, you know, Twelfth Night or, or um, uh, King Lear, and you haven't been able to get into a production, we may read it through one evening and you can come and play a part and it would be great. We would love to have you do that. So I put the web address here, sarda.com shows is where you go to and it will, you can upload it all by yourself and put all your information in there. We just ask for a couple of things. Make sure there's no personal information included in there. Like don't put your cell phone number or something like that as the contact because this is going to be shared in social media and you probably don't want all that out there. Um, and really make sure that you're ready for us to have that information about your show, about your production. If there's any changes, you can contact us in that same spot and make those changes and go, hey, we, de we decided... Just like that one theater company had to postpone their um, auditions because, you know, everything was getting rained out and it was such bad weather up, up at their theater company. Things happen. And so we, we are here. We're flexible like that so we can make those kind of changes and get the word back out there to people that, hey, we had to kind of pivot in midstream here. Um, so we're going to do something different. We'd like to bring you some more of what we call our community conversations. So I'm going to start personally reaching out to folks again and um, asking them, hey, you want to come on here and talk about your show, talk about your latest production, talk about what you're doing, talk about your upcoming season. People are starting to put together those full seasons again, and I'm so excited to see it. So I really want you all to be able to come on here and tell us about it. So again, email us, sarda.com, and let us know. I would love to do a community conversation. I want to tell you about the amazing things that are going on at our theater company and what productions we've got coming up. And then we'll, get, we'll make that happen. We will, we will set up an interview time with you and make that happen and then broadcast it here on, on our Twitch stream in the evenings. Uh, we're here every Tuesday night, uh, usually starting about 7 o'clock, and some nights will go a little bit longer. Uh, I know we should, you know, typically when you're here on Twitch, you're looking at something that's going two, three hours. We probably won't go that long, unless I can find a really good game to play. I am open to that idea. So if you have game ideas, email those to me too. Um, we are not your typical... Twitch stream because we are talking about community theater and what's going on out here in our Sacramento area. So we are pretty regional when it comes to that. So if you're watching from someplace else, know that that's where we're from. We're in Sacramento. You know, let us know where you're from. If you're watching here on Twitch, please click the follow button and follow us. Uh, I saw today in the mail that we had gotten a new follow and I was so pleased to see that. Thank you so much for following us. Uh, we'll be here to tell you about what's going on in our amazing community theater space here in Sacramento by putting a spotlight on our community theaters. You know, the coolest thing about 
community theater is people do this because they have the passion for it. They're not doing it because they're getting paid. They're not getting paid. They're doing it because they love theater. Um, and that love shows through. That ambition shows through. That energy comes through when they're acting, when they're up there on that stage. Even the people that are behind the scenes doing all the tech work and everything else, the ones you never see, the folks who are helping with makeup and costuming and things like that, they do this because they love it. And we love it when they do it because it always turns out to be so much fun. So if you're looking for a great evening's entertainment, get yourself some theater tickets Go find yourself a nice place to have dinner. Go to the theater. And then, you know, after dinner, go and talk about what you just saw. Um, you've had everything advertised to you from really, really deep subject plays like the Chinese Lady or the Scottsboro Boys to, to lighter weight things like Alice in Wonderland and Cinderella and anything in between. So there's something for anyone who wants to enjoy local community theater. And we want to say thank you to all of you who are patrons of the arts, who are helping keep the lights on and the theaters working, because without you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. We're going to wrap it up. We've been hanging out now for about 45 minutes, so we'll wrap it up tonight. Next week, I'm going to bring you a community conversation. We'll just have to see who pops in to chat with us next time. So until then... Make sure you follow us, Sarda Theaters. We're on Facebook. We're also on YouTube. Um, every time we do one of these, I download it, record it, and put it on YouTube. So if you missed it that time, you can go back and find it there in our archives on YouTube. Sarda Theaters. Follow us on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. And as I like to share with you each week, we'll see you at the theater. At least I hope I will. Okay? Have a great week, everybody. Enjoy.